Hello there. So welcome to the first part of your NEA investigation. This is a short presentation outlining what you need to do to start off your investigation by looking at your introduction. And this is your summer task whereby you have to complete your introduction by the first lesson of September on the NEA classroom using Google Docs. So I'm going to run through the key elements of an introduction, what it should have and what you need to do in that introduction. So the first thing on this PowerPoint, which you will have access to, is just a brief checklist. So to start with, I've put a word count at the top there for you. Please don't pay too much attention to your word count. But to give you a guideline, it should be between six and eight hundred words. If you're finding it's massively over that, don't worry, we can deal with that later. If you are finding it's only 200 words, you have not gone into enough detail. So in your NEA introduction, you must have your investigation title, the sub questions or hypotheses for physical that you have come up with. There should be about three of those. You need to have a section called justification for study, which explains exactly why you can do this investigation, how it links to the A-level specification. Location, where you will have maps and possibly images of the locations you're going to look at as well. The longest section is geographical theory and background. And here you explain the geography of your investigation. You explain the basic ideas behind what you are looking at. And you also outline the theories you are going to include in your investigation. And finally, you've got to do a referencing section for all of your NEA, which will go together at the end to show that you are citing other people's work. So let's go through each of these sections briefly then. And the first one is the investigation title and the sub questions example. Now, I have used examples throughout this PowerPoint of um, when I was at my previous school. So it doesn't really matter. They are the exact same type of thing. So as you can see here, the example on screen, I have clearly outlined at the start of my document at the top, I am doing an investigation into the variations in quality of life between Luton South and Harpenden. I then briefly outline that title and I go straight to my sub questions or my hypotheses. And as you can see, I've put one of my sub questions there. What are the perceptions and actual levels of crime in both areas? So I'm going to focus on what people think about crime in Luton and Harpenden and what actual crime rates are within Luton and Harpenden. As you can see, I've briefly outlined just under the question then what I'm trying to find out here, what it will help me do. So I've said it will help me answering people's perceived safety. It will help me link levels of crime to their quality of life. And so I would do that for the three sub questions that I have chosen. The next section of your introduction is called the justification for the investigation. Now, this section is all about you convincing the examiner that your investigation is linked to A-level geography and linked to the A-level specification for Edexcel. In other words, that it's valid. Now, I have put a link on this presentation and it's on the PowerPoint as well just up here on the right hand side, and that link is to the Edexcel A-level geography specification. When you go on to that document, you will be able to see the entire of the A-level geography specification, and it is all numbered into sections. So what you can do is you can pick out the sections that are relevant to your investigation. So for example, if you are doing a physical investigation and looking at coasts, you're gonna to go to the coasts document and you're gonna pick out some of the areas in the coasts section that are relevant to what you're investigating. Similarly, if you're looking at, for example, quality of life or crime, you might go to diverse places, for example, and have a look there at the sections in diverse places relevant to your investigation. As you can see at the bottom of the screen then, I have given another example here. Now, this example is not from the Edexcel exam board, it is from the AQA, but the similar sort of thing would happen with yours, where you write, some detailed paragraphs, short detailed paragraphs, as you can see this, this candidate has done in the past, where they outline exactly what part of the specification, in this case, this was an investigation into sustainability, um, exactly what part of the investigation 
it links to. And this person has also even quoted some of the phrases from the specification and used the specification numbers for each section as well. The next thing you will need to do in your introduction is the location. So with the location, you need to try as much as you can to use OS maps not just Google Maps. And you're going to need different scales of maps, okay? So you're going to need a map of the region, then a map of the town, then a map of the street, for example, okay? So you can make sure also that you do a brief description with those maps as to where your investigation locations are. In other words, describe where you are doing this investigation. And finally, it's also within that context, useful to do a paragraph here as well, outlining some of the locational context. So you might want to include things like the population size of the town or area. You might also want to look at the socioeconomic background of the town or area. In other words, is it affluent? Is it deprived, etc. There are a number of sources you could use for that online, so I won't go through them, but I have included for you there just the two links one to the OS or Ordnance Survey Maps website, and finally one to just Google Maps. Street view on Google Maps could be useful for you if you want to give a brief image of the street that you are looking at particularly. Now, next is the biggest section in your introduction, and this is the geographical background and theory section. Now, you need to be very clear on what this section is aiming to do you are setting out the background geography to your investigation. You are giving geographical explanation as to what you are studying and what you are focusing on. And you are also then providing the theories you have researched that link to your investigation. So for example, if you are doing a coastal management investigation, you are going to outline the types of management that exist in the place you are going. So for example, groins, seawall, riprap. You're going to outline what they are. If you are doing a human investigation, you are potentially, for example, going to outline what quality of life means, what factors are involved in quality of life, what are you measuring, what types of things might you look at. If you are doing crime, for example, you would also, in your geographical background, explain how crime links to geography. How does crime link to geography and geographical research? And for your theories, these are independently investigated by you. You need to have a couple of theories in this place, in this part of the introduction, by other people, secondary sources um, from all over the world, from the internet, for example, that outline the theories on a specific thing you are looking at. So for example, the student on the screen now was looking at garden cities and their sustainability. So this student outlined on the left here where garden cities came from. How were they made? When were they made? This student has also outlined how Letchworth came into existence. And this student has quoted some people as to what they have said about garden cities in the past. This student has also then gone on on the right hand side here to look at a theory called the three spheres of sustainability. And this is a theory that this student found themselves through research and used it because they thought it would be relevant to their investigation and something that they could use later on maybe as well. And you can see this theory here looks at social, environmental and economic um, conditions and links that all to sustainability. You can also see that this student has looked at the donut effect of suburbanization in America. Now, you essentially need to try and find as many theories as you can and whittle that down to the most useful theories that you can put in your introduction related to the topic you are looking at. And finally, throughout your entire NEA, this is not just for the introduction, you need to be referencing. Now, referencing involves you keeping track and log of all of the sources, the things you've read, the things you've looked at, the things that have influenced your decisions, the things you have quoted directly in your writing. So you need to reference anything and everything that you use and that you read. You need to keep a list of these sources and you can use the tool above, the referencing tool at the top, as a link to create your bibliography. 
Now, when you go on to that link at the top, Neil's Toolbox, basically it asks you to put in a number of details about the source. So you fill in as much of that as you can and it will generate for you your reference. You then copy that reference and put it in your document at the end. This is the Harvard referencing system and anybody who goes to university will be very familiar in future with the Harvard referencing system. And it does involve you also within your text, within your paragraphs, wherever you quote or wherever you use something from somebody else, you need to give the author and the date. How do you do that? I've got two examples at the bottom. So I've made up a quote here. And it says, rural crime rates are a juxtaposition of urban crime. That's my quote. I've put it in quotation brackets. Now, I need to make sure that I make the reader aware that this is not me saying this. This is a quote. So what have I done? In brackets at the end of it, Smith 2016. And obviously in my bibliography later, I will have used Neil's toolbox and I will have put in the rest of the information and it will have automatically generated it for me to copy and paste in. I've got another example at the bottom of a different way of using it, okay? And it says, there are significant differences between the levels of erosion at Bridlington and Mappleton along the East Coast, according to Jones in brackets 2020. You can see there, I didn't do Jones 2020 in brackets because I was using it in a different context. So long as you have the name of the author, just surname, and the year, you are fine. Now, if you are using a website, for example, this would be slightly different. You would just put in brackets the name of the website. You don't need the year. OK, so just make sure you very clearly reference throughout and have a bibliography at the end of what you have used and who it is from. This is to avoid what's called plagiarism, which is copying other people's work without giving them credit. So that is an end to this brief introduction to the introduction of the NEA. Please follow these instructions very clearly over the summer to complete your introduction. And if you've got any questions over the summer, do not leave it till the last two or three days please do email Mr. Huckle or Mr. Hatchell, myself, and we will be happy to help you and answer them as soon as we possibly can. Good luck with your introduction, and we look forward to reading them in September.